The U.S. dealership count grew for the second year in a row. New vehicle sales dipped last year, but there's a prediction that there's going to be a rebound in 2023. And welcome back to Everyman Driver. The number of U.S. franchise dealerships in 2022 rose for the second year in a row after two years of declines. There were just over 18,000 new vehicle dealerships as of January 1st, 2023, up 27 stores from 2022. My knee-jerk reaction is, where are the cars to fill up these dealerships? California added 25, Texas added 9, Virginia added 5, representing the states with the most dealership gains. Michigan lost the most stores with a decrease of 9 dealerships while Indiana lost seven, Minnesota fell by five. So the number of dealerships increased, but the number of franchises declined. As of January 1, there were 31,554 franchises, down 0.29%. The number of franchises fell 1% in 2021 to about 31,600. This is strange. Amid lower vehicle sales and inventory shortages, which we all felt, the average number of new vehicles sold by U.S. dealerships declined in 2022. Annual U.S. light vehicle sales ended just under 14 million last year, down 8% from 2021. Sales forecast for 15 million new vehicles this year. That's a prediction. If that prediction holds true, that would be a nearly 8% increase from the year before. How is this possible? More dealerships, but we have inventory issues. Prices are higher. Inventory is hard to find. I just can't wrap my head around this. Maybe you understand it better than I do. Please leave your feedback in the comments section below. And now this list from RepairPal. The top 10 most reliable full-size trucks ranked from best to worst. And then we'll single out one just to single out one. Here they are. Ram 1500, Nissan Titan, GMC Sierra 1500, Dodge Ram 1500, Silverado 1500, Tundra, Ford F-150, GMC Sierra 2500 HD, you got the Silverado 2500 HD, and the Ram 2500. And technically, the three trucks below the F-150 are considered heavy-duty trucks, obviously, but RepairPal has all of these trucks in the same category. All right, time to single out one, and that's going to be the Ford F-150 because it's a Ford. It ranked seventh out of those 10 full-size trucks even though it is the best-selling full-size pickup truck in America, as they remind you every single year for the last four decades. The thing is, what makes the F-150 rank so low on the full-size truck class when it comes to reliability? So according to RepairPal, the F-150 receives a 3.5 out of 5, which places it above the average full-size truck. It ranks 7th out of the 17 trucks in this class, which does place it in the top half, but is that good enough for the top selling truck in the market, being seventh? So RepairPal collects actual data regarding the cost, frequency, and severity of repairs and maintenance for all vehicles. This means you don't see predicted numbers uh, for this organization, but actual data, which is so helpful. Breaking down the three factors considered for the F-150, this is what we find in terms of cost. The average annual cost of repairs and maintenance for a F-150 is $788 compared to $936 for the full-size truck class. Frequency now. The frequency of F-150 unscheduled repairs, unscheduled repairs is relatively low at 0.28 times per year compared to 0.4 times for the full-size truck class. This is lower than the average for the auto market, which shows 0.4 times per year frequency, and that is for the auto market. And the final factor is severity when they're looking at the score for probability of severe unscheduled repairs. This truck's probability is 15% compared to 18% for the full-size truck class. What is the 2023 Ford F-150 predicted reliability rating? We've got new numbers here. J.D. Power gives it 86 out of 100, and this places this truck in the great category. It's good to be in a great category. And when looking at iccars.com data, the F-150 is second only to the Tundra for predicted reliability. And since we're on the topic of F-150s, here are some Ford F-150 model years to avoid. Mm -hmm. 
And some say the 2004 through 2006 model years was the worst stretch in the F-150's impressive history. Specifically, 2004 and 2005 had low consumer and critical reviews for its problems with corroded gas tank straps that would ultimately cause it to detach and drag below the chassis and drag on the ground. The same issue was prominent for the 2005 model year with an added airbag defect that would inadvertently deploy and drivers had a major recall and safety hazard. These two model years had similar issues that plagued customers and since these are nearly 20 years old, there are plenty of other years to choose from that will save you some money on your purchase. Aside from the corrosion issues, they also had common problems with window and spark plugs. That's a lot of potential headaches for drivers to deal with. The spark plugs were caused by a faulty aluminum cylinder head design and both model years were reported to have spark plugs breaking and causing engine problems on a routine basis. Especially during repair, there was a higher reported rate of engine damage for the 6 liter V8, 5.4 liter V8, and 6.8 liter V10 than in previous years. On top of that, both years struggled with basic window performance where the power window control wouldn't register or the window would fail to release from the door itself. You might be tempted by the low listing price, but these three model years will likely cost you more money than you'll save on the initial purchase price. By the third year of having these issues, the 2006 started to show some promise, but most trucks never made it over 100,000 miles in their lifespan. When the powerhouse trucks from the 1990s were still on the road, most 2006 models gave out after just over seven years. After a few years of fewer issues, the spark plugs again plagued the 2010 model. While a handful of years in this time frame had fewer issues, common coil failures caused the engine to misfire or not start entirely from this period. Luckily, this is one of the last years to report engine failure as a widespread problem. But the 2010 is definitely an F-150 model year to avoid plenty of issues with its sensory system. In one of the early years of the My 4 touchscreen, drivers reported sudden unresponsiveness and situations where the backup camera never popped up while backing up the truck. It was one of the first iterations of smartphone compatibility. The 2010 failed to recognize phone connections, which can be a big headache today if you need to connect for calls or directions. The 2010 is a newer F-150 model year to avoid with its reoccurring issues from prior generations and it's also the first in a few from this era that had transmission failure as early as 35,000 miles. Model years 2015 through 2017 were incredibly high selling model years but we know they didn't always perform at expectations when looking back on this stretch. The three main problems reported were faulty door mechanics, transmission and gear shifting problems, and brake failure. In terms of engine and gear shift failure, these issues were reportedly more common when drivers were transporting weights weighing around 5,000 pounds when it became difficult to shift. For an F-150 that has a towing capacity over 10,000 pounds on most models, this is a problem. While the 2015 through 2017 model years were popular and sold well, there are a lot of issues from these years that should make you steer clear of this period. Brake failure again was reported several times with several drivers claiming that their master cylinder needed to be replaced after their brakes suddenly stopped working. The dashboard displayed a low brake fluid warning and drivers could not operate the brakes within minutes of that. While there were fewer reported complaints, the same problems were expected in the 2016 and 17, with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration receiving complaints of engine stalls for these two model years under 30,000 miles. So you might be wondering which F-150 model years are good. How about 2018 and newer? You can find plenty of used vehicles from these years that might look like a good deal, but keep in mind, that they are still relatively young at five years old and more problems might come up. A used truck for around 20 grand would be tempting for anyone, but going for a lower purchase price will probably cost you more money and frustration in repairs. The most recent generations might be more expensive, but they're roomy, well-equipped for hauling and towing and have great technology and entertainment options. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area 
on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.